Hello and welcome to my latest painting tutorial. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint this Night Lord's Legion uh, Praetor for the Horus Heresy. Now as you can see the models have already been completely stuck together and primed black. Now unusually for me I've glued the head into uh, onto the model uh, and the reason for that is when I was test fitting the head was a little bit awkward to get in and out and uh, my assumption was I'd probably end up damaging the paintwork a little bit, you know, trying to get it back uh, into the hole after painting it. So uh, I just decided to, to just go for it and just glue it in there to start with. Uh, I didn't find any major issues uh, when painting it. It's just a little bit trickier, but everything that needed to be painted was painted. Uh, so to start with, I'm using some Night Lord's Blue. Uh, it was quite uh, appropriate, really. And you can see it's on the wet palette there in the, the top. So top left of the screen, top right of the wet palette. <laughs> and it's uh, it's watered down, so this is quite important. The, uh, the model isn't being dry brushed at the moment. It's sort of being very heavily stippled. I'm using an Artist Opus dry brush. Uh, it's quite a small one, but you could use something like a makeup brush. Although, you know, if it's not your brush, make sure you ask before you start loading it up with paint. Um, and so you have to water it down uh, around about 50-50 water to paint. Uh, you know, it, it does, it's not exact, like you, you can test it as long as it leaves a blue mark. Uh, the main thing is when you're applying it, try and get it into all the, the deep recesses and things like that. Uh, because So it's a very big brush that you're using and there's a lot of detail. This model is uh, kind of has an overabundance of detail really. Uh, so especially on the chest areas and things, just really scrunch that brush in there just so that the armor actually gets some paint on it because what you'll probably find is you'll, you know, if you're a bit light, you tap the paint brush on there, you might get a little bit of blue paint on the armor, but most of it will be on like the skulls and the spinal cord and things like that. You know, so just make a bit of effort. You can see here the difference between the dry paint and the wet. I know when you're applying the wet paint, it's going to look a bit messy, uh, but it does neaten up a lot as it dries. Uh, I'm, Part of that is due to having the paint watered down, so that is a, an important thing. So we're doing the same thing again here now, and we're on to Cantor Blue. Uh, and it, it's pretty much doing exactly the same thing, but not being quite as vigorous with how we're applying it. Uh, you can see, like, the paint, you can easily see how watered down the paint is as I'm applying it, because you get, like, very wet, sort of blobby marks on there. This isn't something that's going to leave a thick layer of paint, and this is like a, a really important thing to remember like so you're not dry brushing it you're not you don't want a heavy build up of paint because we're going to do a lot of layers on this because of all, all the varnishing and things uh, as we're using the uh, oil paints later on uh, you can see just at the bottom uh, the model is actually tacked onto the base so i'm using kind of <laughs> so it's but i think the company's called blue tack or whatever but it's obviously white tack it's just like you know a tack like poster tack that you, you know if you'd stick posters on the walls and things like that uh, just so I've got something to hold on to you'll probably see it change a little bit later on where I put it onto uh, a painting uh, base to hold on to uh, and then later on in the video I glue it back to the base and things so you know it, it doesn't matter too much I didn't find there was any uh, reason really to have it to not have it glued to the base because uh, you can still reach all the areas that you need to it's you know got a very open pose so the uh, third color that we're using here is uh, McCrag blue don't know if that's how you pronounce it but that's how it's i'm going to be pronouncing it uh so and again it's exactly the same thing again but you're focusing more on the areas where the light hits naturally uh so all you have to do is just hold it under a lamp or something like that uh, just so that you can just to give you an idea but you don't have to be too too exact with how you do this uh because obviously as you turn the model around the light will move on it so there's not like one exact uh, angle to hold it up but if you go for a slight uh, directional lighting with it it will m tend to make the model look a bit more interesting so you can see from the front here i go for a more like a top left uh, angle and that makes it a bit more easy when i'm filming it as well because uh, you know the lamp is directly ab above me so if i hold the model slightly to the side i, I you know it, it, the light the light will naturally fall onto those angles uh, so it just gives me a really easy guide to uh, refer to for uh, placing any highlights on there uh, you can see here i'm just going in with uh, a small paintbrush it doesn't have to be as small as this uh, but uh, you know anything with a good tip on but so as i was mentioning earlier there's a lot of detail on the sort of chest area on this and even you know with making a bit of effort to try and get the paint in there uh, the top of his chest is faces upwards so the light will naturally catch it and it wants to be highlighted 
but you can't really get that sort of stippling technique with the larger uh, dry brush in there uh, you know because it, it just doesn't reach properly so it, it will look a bit dark so just go in with the you know the small brush and just do a bit of very rough uh, you know don't spend a lot of time on it in fact don't spend a lot of time on any of these early stages before we do the oil wash uh, i've done this <laughs> process a few times now and what i've discovered is that um, you know spending too long in the, uh, the early stages is a complete waste because the, sort of the oil does a lot of the magic in terms of shading and it and blending so any uh, of these early highlight stages uh, even if they look really rough and unfinished they will look so much better just after the oil wash and then we are going to be painting on top of those art anyway after the, the oil wash is dried so it's not worth spending the time beforehand just you just really want to get those sort of colors and a little bit of light direction and very rough texture on there when I say rough, I don't mean in terms of paint buildup. I just mean you're not spending a lot of time doing it. <laughs> um, but, you know, just to get paint on the model, really. So this final stage of highlight, uh, I wasn't actually super happy with this. So I, I've used Calgar Blue for this stage, but this is a layer paint. So layer paints are a little bit different than base paints. Uh, and the main thing that they're different with is that they are very translucent. Uh, what that means is it just when you apply it, they're very see-through. They don't leave a very strong mark. Now, for my type of painting, when I'm trying to paint quickly, especially, uh, I prefer my paint to be a bit more opaque. So Calgar Blue <laughs> wasn't really cutting it. Now, if you wanted to do very soft transitions, uh, layering up, spending a long time being really neat and things and with glazing, then you know the Calgar Blue would be great. But I wanted to get this stage done quite quickly. Uh, and it, I just found it a bit frustrating that the uh, the marks that I was making, uh, they just they're hardly making marks. You know, I mean, you can kind of see them on the model as I'm doing them now, but for me, it just it, you know it, they weren't light enough. Um, it's the same. You're doing the same sort of thing. So I'm, I'm using a small brush, so it's a size zero zero Artis Opus brush. Uh, you don't have to use Artis Opus brushes. Uh, I it just happened to be my preference in terms of painting. But you know, anything with a good point on. Uh, it doesn't actually need to be a good point even at this stage because again like I was saying it's a very quick early uh, painting before the oil wash and for this stage as well you're only doing this really on the front on the most important areas that stand out uh, so this will be to help you with your focal points so the arm with the gun on the shoulder pad the head the forward leg so uh, the upper thigh and the, the sort of chest area those are the uh, the main points that the, the light's going to hit don't bother spending too much time on the back doing loads of fine detail stippling and things like that uh, it's not worth it at this stage you can do that later on uh, if you want to you know just to make the, the whole model up to a, a high standard I'm doing this to kind of like a, a very high tabletop standard uh, you could probably get away with calling it display maybe if you want um, but you know I mean, the, the, the uh, tag doesn't really matter, you know, how you describe it. Uh, but I think it looks pretty cool at the end uh, for a, a reasonably quick paint job. I think it took me around about five or six hours total to paint the model, um, which is obviously too long for a uh, tabletop model for, uh, you know, general army purposes. But for something like a, a Praetor, uh, then I think it's worth spending a, a little bit of time on, um, you know, because it, obviously it's like the, the leader of your army. So uh, again, as I was mentioning, uh, focusing on the head here, uh, and really I, I do spend too much time on this little bit of stippling. Um, if you don't want to use the Calgar Blue, which by the end of this I, I didn't, um, if you just go back and use the uh, McCrag Blue and mix some white in with that, you'll get a much more opaque finish. The, that's because the McCrag Blue is a base paint. Uh, I'm not super keen on the difference between base and layer paints because I feel like you could just add uh, water or you know whatever medium you want to a base paint and you'll get a thinner paint anyway. So yeah, um, I mean you, you can use whichever paint you want really, uh, but for me yeah I, I just wasn't really very happy with the the, uh, the McCrag paint for this like I mean it still works it gets the job done uh, but I, I feel like I could have done it even quicker with uh, more opaque paint so there you can see I've just spent a little bit of time doing some 
uh, very sloppy stippling uh, just getting it in the highlight points now you will find at this stage and it's quite common with uh, with my videos with these tabletop uh, painting army pieces that the model looks just awful <laughs> in the early stages as you're going through uh, and it's one of these things where you have to trust the process uh, because it you know it will turn out okay in the end uh, and really the, the oil wash does make a vast difference what well, the, the oil wash and the uh, the matte varnish afterwards makes a huge difference in terms of just neatening everything up um, you can see here I'm just picking out a few edge highlights as well it doesn't matter too much if these are super bright so again I'm using the Calgar blue and if you know if you find they just you know, stand out too much then don't worry the uh, the oil wash is going to tone it right down be a little bit careful if you want to do any stippling using the McCrag blue because that will make the armor a bit too blue he'll start looking like an ultramarine and you don't really want that uh, you know the the main thing about the night lords is their armor is quite dark so the McCrag blue is more of a highlight color uh, and if you just want a touch more like saturation in there that's the the color to go for but only keep it around sort of like the highlight areas and but make sure that you add a bit of white to that for the you know the higher highlight areas uh, or use the, the Calgar blue if you want to use that uh, you know just to get the uh, the desaturation in afterwards so it's you know it's kind of like up to you on the exact coloring that you want you can see it again like some of the the paints that I'm using here they're, they're quite watered down with the stippling because you know I, I don't want the super hard marks and things the you know I've already mentioned how the oil wash will soften it all and blend it all together but the you know just keeping everything soft like thin layers of paint because again there's lots of layers of you know different uh, mediums going onto the the model so the thicker the layer of paint you add the more you get likely that you're going to ruin the detail or just make it look really sort of messy and chunky at the end. So here we're just going to block in some of the red. Uh, this will start making a nice, uh, yeah, it'll make the model look a little bit better at this stage, adding the red. So I'm using my fist in red. It, by the way, if you're looking at my wet palette there and you're like, why is all the paint looking so funny? Like, it looks like it's drying. It's not drying. What's happened is, so I've been using my wet palette for quite a long time and then um, you know you, you wash the paint off and I've done that probably a, a few too many times now and I've started wearing off the top layer of it so uh, the paint is kind of bleeding into the texture because I've roughed it up too much from you know, scrubbing the paint off all the time so you know don't worry about that it, you know it's just because I haven't put a, a fresh a piece of paper on there I've just kept using the same piece over and over uh, so next up is, oh, and by the way, for the Mephiston red, you know, you probably want to do a couple of layers, but just pick out anything red that you want to be red. Now, some of the lenses, uh, so he's got, I think, three or four lenses on there. Those are going to have a slight different look to them, to the rest of the red, and they'll be a bit darker. But the uh, the oil wash will dull them down, so it'll be quite easy to just do the strong highlights over the top, and they'll be, you know, high contrast still. Uh, here you can see I'm just sort of flicking paint on, onto the model for the, the sort of bone areas I did find this a bit of a pain actually there's a lot of these bone bits like spinal column sections and skulls and stuff all over the model uh, this just the, the, the spine things they've got lots of little angles uh, try and keep it neat you don't have to get a perfectly opaque finish to how you you know to the paint you can see here mine I use quite watered down paint uh, so I did like a couple of layers on each one don't worry about going into the recesses like if it goes in there so it'll look a bit rubbish you won't be able to see the individual teeth very clearly uh, things like that and when you're applying the paint try and paint towards the highlight areas so again like you hold the model under the lamp see where the lights hitting it move your brush always towards those areas and it'll create kind of like a rough sort of uh, highlight on there just using the one color of paint here I'm using Bane Blade Brown and this is going over anything that's going to be uh, sort of flesh colored uh, you know I thought if, so if it's got a decapitated a couple of decapitated heads on there bits of skin stuck to his armor all over uh, my thinking is that the all of the skin is going to be really kind of 
ill looking at this stage there's no blood in it that you know the, the coloring is going to be really hard to determine so um, just like a really kind of desaturated browny gray color uh, should get the job done <laughs> so you can still sort of see that it's a different material from the the skulls but um, you know it, the no specific coloring to I mean there's no telling what they've done with these you know little grizzly trophies so uh, don't what you know I would suggest against going with anything sort of pinky colored or anything that's too vibrant uh, making it look lively because that is clearly they're not alive unless it's a, a chaos, chaos <laughs> um, like kept alive sort of curse thing something like that but this is like a heresy model so he might still be a good guy at this stage for all we know uh, I don't know what everyone was thinking that the night lords could be uh, on the uh, the Imperium's good side when they walk around looking like this but you know whatever <laughs> uh, the same thing again when applying the paint a uh, paint towards the highlights now you can see here the vein blade brown it doesn't have great coverage but it's not a problem in terms of like it allows you to do you know, some very quick uh, like layers. Uh, I've watered it down again around about 50-50 water to paint. Uh, I made a bit of a mess there. Didn't rub the paint off on my thumb or anything. So the brush was too overloaded on the tip. That's the thing. Like if you overload your brush on the tip, you there's a strong chance you're going to make a mess with it. Uh, but it's very easy. I just cleaned off the brush, slightly damp brush, rub it over the area. Uh, because the paint's quite watery and wet, uh, it'll just sort of soak into the brush anyway very easy to correct that kind of mistake there whereas if you were using a more opaque paint uh, like a thicker paint it would start to dry before you could even start cleaning it off so there are benefits to using thinner paint in terms of mistakes so if you make a lot of mistakes then thinner paint will be your friend uh, oh the uh, the colors that I used for the bones were oh, it's just Baylor brown basically at this stage um, the reason that I swap back and forth here, so I did a load of the bone colors, so like the skulls on the spike on top and on, you know, the bits on his chest. Uh, then I went and did the flesh colored things, the skin, flayed skin, whatever it is <laughs> between his legs. Uh, I did that first because that way I could, you know, just get the brush in there without having to worry about catching it again on the skulls around it. I'm not super keen on the skulls that are down there around his groin area. Um, I feel like he could probably lose a couple of these extra details. Uh, and also they're kind of like different sizes as well. They sort of like drop down in size as they go further down. So I guess he's been killing children or something like that, maybe. But, <laughs> um, you know, it's... It just makes it a little bit easier painting the skin, flayed skin sort of things first before going on to painting the bone. Uh, and by the way, so the one of the skulls that's hanging down, it's got a little hook, uh, so it's right next to the sort of the dead head next to it. Uh, when I was looking at that a bit closer, I felt actually that it looked like it has skin on it and it's just been on his hook there for quite a while. Uh, so later on, I do change it a little bit. Um, I mean, you'll see that later on in the video um, when I you know mess about with the the colours a little bit more just to make it a bit more interesting. Uh, here you can see I'm just using some Montfrang Brown on anything that's going to be kind of leather. So the little leather straps hold, holding the bones, uh, you know, off his belt and on his big, I think it's a chain glaive or something like that. Uh, again, it's, it's very watered down as well, just to keep the uh, the layers. Uh, nice and smooth and uh, as thin as possible. So here we're using Elven Gold by Scale 75. You don't have to use this, any gold will do. In fact, you don't even have to use gold, you can use whatever metallic colour you want. Uh, I just thought it would be kind of interesting to have these as kind of gold studs. I know on the box art when they did it, they were sort of like a more bronzy coloured. I just got this colour because I wanted to try it out. Um, I'm actually going to paint some uh, Heresy Era Imperial Fists and I thought some of you know the gold might be interesting on them uh, so I just wanted to test out the, the color of the paint and that's why it's going on here so don't feel like you need to use this particular color <laughs> uh, but you know it is a very nice and shiny gold uh, this uh, is a little bit more interesting that the burnt iron 
Uh, it's a nice color. Uh, I really like these sort of silvery colors from Vallejo, uh, the uh, the metal color ones. They are very, they're more for airbrush really, but I find that they have such good coverage and they flow so nicely. The only thing is you have to be a little bit careful with them because if you accidentally catch the wrong area, they will sort of flow into recesses and over other parts of the model. So don't overload your brush when you use them. Uh, if anything, you can put it into a well palette like you can see I've got here and just give it a minute to dry. Uh, so it just makes them a little bit more controllable. You can see here as I'm applying it to the, the chain glaive, I'm really being quite messy with how I'm doing it. Still keeping it, you know, so it's almost dry brushing. So don't use a brand new like fine detail brush for this. This is an old brush. You can see it looks a bit ratty. It's still a size zero zero, but it's just one that I've, um, you know, put to one side for kind of like rougher uh, painting. You know, try not to get it too much into the recesses. That'll help with creating a nice bit of depth and detail. So it, it is sort of dry brushing, but I'm not, you know, rubbing it off on a piece of kitchen roll and spending a lot of time doing it. it it's kind of like, I don't know, wet dry brushing or something. <laughs> uh, but, you know, just being kind of sloppy, you know, I'm covering most of the area. Well, um, when I say sloppy, you know, don't get it onto anything else you've already painted, obviously. Um, you still got to be fairly controlled with how you're doing it. Don't just close your eyes and point the brush at the, the model. <laughs> but, you know, you don't have to cover the whole area of the metallics. You can just, you know, pick up some of the, the more raised parts and leave the recesses black. Uh, and there we are. That's, you know, so it looks like I've done it fairly quickly. This actually took me the longest part of the, all the painting with blocking in the colors. It's <laughs> I kinda, my least fun part of painting a model is blocking in the colors. Uh, but, you know, if at this stage you like how it looks, then by all means, you know, stop right now. You don't have to do any of it. Like if you don't have oil paints or anything like that, uh, it should, you know, it still looks uh, quite good and I, I think it'd be perfectly suitable for a tabletop level um, but uh, also so you can see there I've just given the whole model a quick coat of Vallejo Mecca gloss varnish now I applied it with an airbrush I, I wanted to do this video without using an airbrush uh, you can apply this without using an airbrush I just did it because it's quicker but you know put it in a well palette you might want to water it down a little bit just so you get a nice even flow but just you know cover the model nice and quick um, and you'll get a, a nice finish anyway you don't need to use an airbrush it just happens i did for you know to speed it up so here i'm using burnt sienna uh, oil paints i'm using the red grass uh was it glass plate thing that they sent me uh, you know i just find it really uh, kind of handy for this sort of thing so i can cover it up in one of the uh, the palettes to keep it fresh for a few days longer but you know if you've got like a tile or anything like that that's uh, great to work with as well but what i did was i so i took uh, some oil paint uh, just black and burnt sienna uh, and i mixed them together and then i've been adding the mineral spirit uh, when you're doing this be careful because so i have a problem i've been painting with acrylics for a long long time and i've built up a lot of muscle memory in terms of putting my brush into the water jar and uh, licking my brush and things like that be really conscious of what you're doing and <laughs> don't do those things <laughs> uh, especially the licking part but what you'll find is so it goes quite thin but it doesn't go as thin as water when you're applying this to the paint uh, so you can still see this like sort of bumps and like smooth undulations on there but you can see also that I haven't turned all of the paint into that same consistency so some of it is still quite thick uh, and the reason for that is uh, I want to have a little bit uh, thicker paint in a few areas so I'll show you that uh, when we get to it but first of all uh, so and this is important make sure the gloss paint has dried uh, you can use an airbrush not an airbrush sorry, a hairdryer uh, just to speed up the process but you know it needs to be fully dried before you do this uh, next stage you do not want to apply this to uh, the wet varnish or you, you'll make a mess and just ruin the whole process uh, but you know once you've mixed the color together to one you're happy with so I like you know, quite a dark brown uh, then you just slop it all over the model for a start uh, also by the way keep your brushes separate from if you're using oil and the acrylics don't use the same brush uh, like you can just get all sorts of issues with that <laughs> so you know try and just if you're using oil paints keep it all separate from 
your water paint session you know even do it on different days whatever just don't let the two mix you know like oil and water <laughs> um but you can see i'm just covering the whole thing now i'm doing it very quickly i'm making a mess uh not doing a great job of it but it'll be fine uh you know don't worry because it dries really really slowly it's one of the big benefits of oil paint is it dries slowly now it will it dries a little bit quicker because it's there's so much mineral spirit uh, mineral <laughs> spirits watering it down diluting it but it still will take a long time to dry if you just left it like this now once you've like slopped all that uh, paint mixture on there i'm going back with the mineral spirits just straight uh, from my little jar um, tray here now i know it looks a bit dirty brown in there that's just sort of like the pigment has floated to the bottom a bit i've just been lazy cleaning it but most of what i'm applying is just plain clear mineral spirit straight from the uh, the bottle and what this will do is it'll uh, just it kind of makes a lot of the pigment that's on the model just sort of flow down more so you don't want the uh, the chest and head area to be as dark as down you know the legs and uh, some of the details lower down uh, but you can see here, so at the bottom of the chain glaive and somewhere around the details of the engine parts, you can, uh, if you look on the uh, the palette where I said I'd left some of the paint that's a little bit thicker. Now this is where you apply this uh, to the model. So especially, you know, around the teeth on the axe or any of the metal parts that you want to be a bit darker, you can then sort of load up the, the extra paint on. Uh, and when that dries, you'll have like a nice transition you can do a very quick transition using oils, uh, just using even one color, and you know, you know, quicker than doing it with acrylics, and probably a, a better result as well. Just be a little bit aware. Obviously, if you have um, mineral spirits still on the brush, it's going to water it down again when you touch the model. So you need like a kitchen roll or something just to wipe off the brush, so you can actually get the thick paint on there, uh, so it's not too wet. Uh, so you know it's pretty straightforward at this stage uh, a few little tweaks here and there you know just to make sure you get the paint in the right place make sure you've got all the recesses and things now here so there's a little time jump uh, one make sure you've let the oil paint dry the oil wash you can use again a hair dryer but give it a good few hours to dry off once it's dried you can see there I use some mech varnish matte paint not, not paint gloss <laughs> spit it out right so mech varnish matte varnish right <laughs> from vallejo uh, and i've given it a coat uh, because what will happen is when you look at it and it's dry with the, you know the gloss to start with and the oil wash it'll just look like garbage uh, but so it's all dry you've given it a good few hours maybe use the hair dryer on it maybe just leave it overnight would be my preference uh, that's actually what i did with this one uh, so really, if you're doing this kind of painting, it's better for batch painting. So you do quite a few models at the same time uh, for the oil wash sort of stage, just so that you can leave them all to dry uh, because, you know, it takes a long time. The actual painting stage is fairly quick, but the drying process does take a lot longer. Uh, but as I said, it'll look really quite messy and horrible after you've after that. But once you give it a coat of the matte varnish, it will sort of just look a lot lot nicer and really you can kind of leave it at that stage like a lot of the uh, the shading and things it looks a bit grimy and dirty it really fits that look of that you know that 30k heresy look that uh, people prefer uh, um, it's a little bit weird actually the uh, the heresy uh, painting standards they seem to really focus on the grim dark grimy kind of look whereas 40k looks a lot sort of cleaner i know a lot of people still like the, the grimy looking 40k but there's also many more i guess it's down to the uh, sort of heavy metal style that shows the that the 40k painting uh, painted models more whereas heresy has always been shown by forge world and their painting style is much more of that kind of grim dark look so i guess the box art has been influencing the communities but regardless um my preferences are more grim dark look anyway uh and that's why i've uh, used this style on the model so you know from here on out uh, the painting process is entirely up to you for how far you want to take it for you know how much time you want to spend on the model so at this stage you can see it so i've gone back to the blue paints uh and you can see the big blue in the middle on the right hand side uh, that i was talking about before that's the mccrag blue and then to the left of that 
is my Crag Blue mixed with white. So I've dumped the Calgar Blue because I wasn't happy with working with it for the uh, the stippling. And you can see now as I'm applying the stippling, I can go back between the two as well. Just be, and I mentioned this before, be a bit careful if you use Macrag blue for any of the stippling you know plain macrag blue because it will make it look a bit more like an ultramarine uh, you can see here in the bottom right on the wet palette i've added a bit more white to the same uh, macrag blue so it's a second stage highlight my after i've done a few of these and then extra highlights all over the model uh, I, i've changed my mind a little bit on whether i should go to this stage highlight or not uh, generally speaking, for all of the armor, don't go any higher than the blue on the second, uh, you know, one down on the left. So the McCrag blue mixed with a small amount of white. That should cover most of the armor in terms of highlight stippling. When you go a stage higher for the highlights, uh, you can get a nice shine spot, but it's going to take a lot longer in terms of blending it all together. Um, if you just want to keep it for the focal points on the model, so like this shoulder and the head, that shouldn't be too much of an issue, but even then, I kind of felt like it wasn't necessary. The only thing where it might kind of be necessary is just on some of the edges. So you can see, like on the disc on the shoulder, shoulder pad, uh, you know, the little circle in front of it, that's got a hard edge going all the way around. So that's quite nice to have like a brighter highlight on. And the same thing with the uh, sort of the helmet cover, you know, the big sort of N shape that goes over the head. Uh, that's got a very hard edge uh, on it all the way around as well so having like a, a brighter highlight on that edge is quite nice but apart from that like on the curved surfaces because i don't want like the armor isn't painted to be really shiny and bright so really the highlights shouldn't be as bright on those surfaces as on the edges like the edges are very hard um you know the the highlight they should be the, the brightest parts really whereas the armor panels themselves you know kind of soft curves uh, and because I'm painting it as sort of like a matte or maybe sad, like you know it's dirty and grimy it's not going to have a strong shine on it so the bright highlights on there shouldn't be as bright as the edges uh, so basically what I'm saying is if you just take the McCrag blue and add a small amount of white to it and do pretty much all of your highlights on the armor uh, using that mix you'll be fine it'll look good uh, and then if you want you can pick out a few sort of bling spots uh, but you will need these higher highlights later on for when we paint on the lightning bolts uh, but that's obviously a separate thing so uh, don't worry about that too much at the, mo uh, at the moment so here you can see where I'm going to mess up slightly actually I was just saying about how uh, you don't need too much of the uh, the bright highlights when I applied this I'm like oh that's way too bright um, one thing to remember though if you have used a matte varnish on something uh, and the paint that you're using is quite watered down so like I said I have these around about 50 50 water to paint what will happen is because the the matte varnish is a sort of uh, a t it gives a slight texture to the model almost uh, and with a very wet paint it will bleed into that texture now it's a very tight like it's a micro bleed but what it sort of does is it means that the edges of the marks become sort of softer uh, because of that wet. like if it's a th if the paint's thicker or more opaque it's not such an issue but with the you know the thin wet paint you know you get these little basically it makes all your marks soft um, because you know that little capillary action into the tiny little textured surface uh, so just be aware of that if you know when painting over uh, a matte varnish i mean that applies to any kind of matte varnish whether you've uh, done an oil wash first or not um, and in some cases it can make the painting a, a little bit easier because uh, so if you want to do stippling and things but get really soft marks uh, then you, you'll have a much easier job because each dot you make will sort of bleed out and sort of you'll get a, a nice quick blended area uh, while still having a bit of soft uh, micro texture so you know this little area here i've uh, kind of messed it <laughs> i mean i've not messed it up but you know i've overworked it a little bit um it is sort of a focal point on the model so kind of it is worth spending a bit more time just to get these bright highlights on it uh but you know 
if you are going to do this, don't do it to the, the rest of the model, just like the, the head and the shoulder and the arm uh, should be plenty. Because like this isn't like a golden demon model or anything. Like if you're doing a golden demon model and you want to spend a long time on it, then sure, go ahead. But even then, you have to be a little bit careful with focal points because you don't want the so like the foot to be as bright and shiny and to draw the eye as much as the head and the shoulder. Uh, so even then, even if you're actually doing um, you know a competition piece model, uh, be a little bit careful with how you place some of these highlights uh, because you don't want every highlight taken up to white. Uh, because that actually defeats the purpose and you don't you know it actually makes it less impactful whereas the more you know so the less white that you use when you do use the white then uh, it actually has a big impact so uh, again this um this thigh here it's quite nice because uh, it's stepping slightly forward uh, he doesn't have any tactical rocks or anything to <laughs> to raise his leg up a bit, but he is slightly, uh, you know, hunched forward. So his leg is standing out, uh, and it's got a very flat angled surface here. So you do you can put a bit of a like a nice shine on it. It, it makes it, it gives the the model a bit of depth. So really, the way the model sculpted, it's very kind of two dimensional, flat face on, apart from the uh, the big chain glaive, and even that, um, it doesn't go. For front to back, it's sort of like angled, almost going straight across the model. Uh, it's really nice, so it's a nice open model in terms of painting. You can get your brush on most of the areas very, very easily. Uh, the so this flat panel on the thigh, uh, you have a few options in how you paint this. Uh, you could do the whole of this flat section as one just light highlight. Uh, I felt that would look too overpowering, though, uh, especially in terms of you know comparing it to the head and uh, shoulder uh, because you just have a big large block of highlight but I definitely wanted it to be f uh, to look like it was further forward so I put like a little highlight line going across it and then sort of blended that out now I don't want to spend too much time doing it but but one of the the benefits of the stippling method is you can get like a very quick transition you know just you know putting some dots there to go a little bit further apart and again, because of that sort of like little micro texture from the matte varnish, they bleed out a bit, uh, you know, keeping it, make sure you're keeping the paint thin, of course. So, um, you know, this sort of stippling along with the, the matte varnish on top, uh, underneath it, uh, creates a, you know, it's quite a quick process to do that. Now, uh, again, like if you want to do like a Golden Demon piece or, you know, whatever, competition piece, then it might not be the best in terms of varnishing first uh, because it, like it, it is giving you a another layer of uh, material to, to work on top of and the more layers that you add then you know the less clean the model looks uh, so I you know I wouldn't recommend this technique for for taking it up to a competition painting standard but in, in terms of, you know it's in in terms of um, like a gaming piece or like a sort of just a display level piece or whatever uh you know that's that's kind of fine uh, and will you know speed up the process for you it's also quite nice if you want to do very soft little sort of micro dry brushing as well because again you've got that very 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 fine texture on the model from the the matte varnish and by the way like if you put a matte varnish on top of a model at the very end uh, you're still going to get that very fine uh, texture on there as well like you, you might not see it very I mean you can't see it at all with the, the naked eye but uh, you know that's really the reason why you don't get the um, the shine on the model <laughs> because there's like a very soft sort of texture on there diffusing the light And again, same process on like the feet as well, uh, more stippling. Um, so the feet are a little bit darker uh, because obviously I didn't put the uh, the pre highlights before I did the oil wash. Um, so you you might want to just use a little bit of the uh, Macrag blue first, just to to get like a, a base color down before putting the uh, the Macrag blue mixed with some white on top but 
be careful doing it because again the McCrag blue adds more blue saturation to the thing it, you know it's more of a like a, a solid blue color whereas obviously if you add white to it then you've already desaturated it uh, you know so just be a little bit careful doing that so here this is how I paint on the lightning bolt very kind of easy uh, so you know start McCrag blue mixed with white paint on the lines now when you do this you want uh, a really good point on your brush uh, using just the very tip of the brush if you see how I'm applying it out there and you want to make it kind of really wiggly but sharp wiggly so not little S lines not like spaghetti <laughs> painted on there you want like little zigzags going in all sort of directions once you've done one line uh, add a little bit more white to the mix go over it again you don't need it to be perfectly on top of it so you can have little breaks and things in the line uh, it makes it look a bit more interesting then the third stage highlight is doing the same thing but we're just using white so I'm using P3 Mara white doesn't matter just my preferred white I find it it's a bit smoother but uh, you know any white will probably do the job and here you're just gonna pick out a few little sections and you can see like on the other disc as well I put the brightest highlight at the very top and it, that matches in with the highlight on the edge of the circle I just thought that was a bit more interesting uh, you know, to make it look like the lightning's coming from the edge of the highlight it just helps to sort of anchor it onto the armor i actually did the same on the thigh there when i put the you know the lightning bolt in if you look in the top left hand corner there's a sort of like a little brighter highlight there so it almost looks like the lightning bolt is kind of coming from the the highlight now i'm going to paint in the eyes uh oh eyes only got one visible eye so this is again my fist in red all the red things are painted using the same colors just some colors are like different make like different amounts of them so first thing i do just paint the whole of the eye red that was done beforehand before the oil wash then i'm using evil sun scarlet uh wild rider red trollslayer orange just or fire dragon bright doesn't really matter which one <laughs> they're both sort of oranges and then mix that with a a bit of white uh, the, what you can see me doing there was using the Mephiston Red uh, quite watered down and just doing a bit of an OSL glow coming from the eye uh, when, so it's painted underneath the eye don't paint it on top so the, the forehead section of the armour that extends further out than the eye so the light wouldn't be able to get up on top of that uh, but underneath uh, the eyes you know, very kind of in line with it so the light will travel down and catch that sort of area it also makes it look a bit more interesting as well um but so you don't want to go too harsh with the the red like keep it sort of almost like a glaze going up to the eye uh, i am going to add some highlight to it like i was looking at it and i was like eh, the the red isn't quite vibrant enough to work on its own the mephiston red uh, you know against the blue uh, to make it look like a glow it's a bit too dark so you do need a, some highlight but you don't want to highlight the OSL glow bit at the bottom too much because that will then defeat the, the like you're taking away the red and it won't look like a red glow anymore but the eye is very very simple you're just painting uh, at least it might well, be more simple uh, when you're not painting it with a camera filming so I'm having to hold this as a bit of a funny angle it's make, made it a bit more tricky for me uh, so I'm neatening it up a little bit after I've uh, just filmed this but it's basically just layering so you just go through those reds and oranges like I said uh, just each time you add the next layer have it a little bit smaller so you can see a little bit of orange and red at the edges of the eye but like towards the center or where, wherever he's looking so the final stage highlight and you can take it up to white if you want whatever wherever you put the final dot of highlight that will kind of like work as his eye for where he's looking uh, for the OSL here so I was mentioning about how it needed to be uh, highlighted a little bit so particularly the edge there right next to the eye that's a good place that the light will catch uh, don't take this all the way up to the orange mixed with white it's a bit too strong and that will then take away the impact of the eye itself because uh, the eye will no longer be just the, you know the brightest part there uh, if you want you can do maybe a tiny little highlight with it right underneath the brightest point of the eye and I think I'm just about to, to do that now here um, but you know don't go 
too strong with this at all because I said like if you do this under edge too bright it'll take away from the impact of the brightness of the eye itself so there's just a tiny little dot right underneath it Uh, so for the rest of the reds, as I mentioned, we're going to be using just exactly the same reds as I just used for the eye, uh, but not going to be taken quite as bright. You can see I've already painted the red cable going into his uh, lens eye magnifier thing, <laughs> and, and that's done exactly the same way. So it was obviously Mephisto and Red to start with, Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red, uh, and I think that was it. I didn't take it any higher than Wild Rider Red. For the lens here, uh, so I just went straight for Wild Rider Red to start with. These are so small that you don't need that many transitions on them. Just try and be a little bit neat uh, with how you do it. So obviously, again, there were Mephiston Red to start with. Just go straight into the Wild Rider Red. A uh, little dot in the top left, a line following the bottom curve. Then uh, highlight using the... Uh, I think it's actually Fire Dragon Bright that I've used for the orange and not Troll Set Orange, but as I said, it doesn't really matter which one you go for. Um, but some of that mixed with a bit of white. Uh, that should be the final highlight at the bottom edge of the lens. And then if you just go back with uh, a white, like I haven't got it on the wet palette there, but like a little white dot on the, uh, the top left, that'll just make that ping just a tiny bit stronger. You know, it'll be like a little bright highlight, a little bit stronger than the uh, the other highlights on there. You can see I just added a bit of water on the, the wet palette just to make it flow a bit. Um, it just helps with <laughs> getting the the paint off the brush. Uh, for you know, because these areas are so small, and you have to be a bit precise. You take a little bit longer with the movements. So sometimes adding a bit more water gives you a tiny bit more time just to get the brush in the right position. So there you see, I went back with a white dot that went on there. Didn't go exactly where I wanted it. So I've just gone back with some Mephiston red, and I'm going to have to tidy this up a little bit. And then I think I do actually, uh, again off camera, just spend a little bit more time making it a bit neater. But um, you know, it gives you a good idea of how it's done anyway and he's got uh, I think another three lenses that you've got to do so there's two either side uh, uh, on the outside of that big N shape um, there's you can, one already painted on this but the other one's just a red block at the moment then he's got another one to the uh, right of this one that I'm painting in so here you can just see I'm just trying to make the, the white dot a little bit cleaner there So the reason that um, when I do the little dots on them, uh, the reason that I do multiple layers of highlight for those is because each time I do them, so the first highlight, when I did the Wild Rider Red, that was quite a big dot, and then each successive dot gets a bit smaller. So it gives a little bit of a transition at the side of the highlight. It just makes the dot look a bit uh, better rather than just going straight for a white dot on top of the dark area. Now I'm just going to quickly paint in the wings for the uh, Night Lord symbol. Uh, these are very simple, so and we're not taking the highlights too strong on these either. The stronger the highlight on these, the less red they're going to look. You don't really want them looking orange. So remember they were painted Mephiston red to start with, then it had the oil wash that, that dulled them down. So you can go start with uh, Mephiston red again, or you can jump straight to the Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, it really doesn't matter too much, but if you use the Mephiston Red to start with, uh, when you apply the Scarlet, it just means the transition will be a bit smoother. Now, I think I just went straight in for the Evil Sun Scarlet. Um, I, really, just picking out the uh, sort of like the vein or the I guess the bony finger parts of the the wings. And if you're just careful with how you apply it, you don't need to use the Mephiston Red, but you know. If you run into trouble, then you, you can go back with Mephis and Red just to help um, get the tra the transition in there. On these little fingery, bony parts on it, the sculpting on this, they are painted so they have like little knuckles and bumps all the way along them. 
uh, so you, you you know you can just kind of like dot the, the brush along there. You don't have to get a, like a really smooth line or anything. In terms of focal points, these are obviously still quite important on the model because uh, they focus uh, straight towards the center on the chest. Uh, so bring the highlights more towards the center of the model, and you know you can where the the wings flare out at the very tips near the shoulders and things because they go right back into the recesses you can leave those quite dark pretty much unpainted uh, in terms of adding highlights uh, and you can see here i'm just really focusing on the bright highlights and again I'm, this is just up to wild rider red i'm not taking this any higher uh, higher as a highlight if i add anything higher than wild rider red and even then wild rider red is desaturating it uh, and making it look less red but you know anything brighter than that and it it won't look red anymore it'll look kind of like orange or pink so now we're painting the skulls you can see I've already painted one of them uh, just you know bottom right I didn't show that on camera because I wanted to test it first uh, and also because it's down far down on the lower underside on the right uh, it's not so easy for you to see uh, but this one's a little bit more easy uh, because it's right in the middle uh, so all I'm using is more gas bone Remember, these were first painted using Baylor Brown, then an oil wash. So then going with more gas bone, you can do sort of like a stipply technique again. Remember, the tiny, tiny micro texture from the matte varnish will help with uh, the watered down paint with a stipple technique. It'll help the, like a little bleed. So, you know, when you do a dot, it sort of spreads out a tiny bit uh, and will help with the transitions. There, I, <laughs> I didn't wipe the paint off uh, on my thumb, so I overloaded the paint. Um, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to kind of push it around a little bit uh, just to get the uh, you know the transition going. I end up with a, a much brighter skull. And really, when you're painting these, you're not going over the whole area. You're just looking for the light. So again, look at how the light from the lamp hits it. But even then, you should be able to work it out yourself uh, because, like, it's anything that's facing upwards. So the lower edges of the eye sockets, the top of the uh, nose, uh, the brow on top of the eye sockets. Uh, you know, pick out like, any upwards facing detail. Just pick it out. Uh, you also want to pick out the teeth. Now, the teeth on this section are a bit of a pain because they're right in the recess. So you can see I haven't shown you <laughs> uh, me painting them there because I know that I'm likely going to catch it a little bit wrong with the, the angle that I'm holding the model at. Uh, here you can see as well. I'm just picking out the uh, the spinal links. Uh, you know, again, pretty straightforward. Thin, thin paint around about 50/50 water paint. Uh, load the tip of your brush up. Rub it off on your finger or whatever on your uh, your painting tile. Something uh, just so that it's not overloaded. So when you touch the model, it doesn't give a big blob on there especially because it's so wet like I mentioned with the micro texture from the varnish you'll get a massive bleed effect with it being too heavy uh, and you can't you just don't have as much control over it and you know these detail like these little detailed uh, features on the model uh, they are excessively detailed and there's a lot of them and because it's in resin the details are a bit sharper so there's you know you just want to spend a little bit more time making sure you catch them correctly here you can see I'm going to have a go now painting the teeth. Uh, so the first two should be just about all right in terms of being able to put the dots in. Uh, oh, and one more thing, so you, you can't see my paintbrush touching the Morgas bone. That's because I've changed colors uh, and I forgot to put it uh, under the camera on the wet palette. So it's gone up to Screaming Skull as the second highlight. So first highlight was Morgas bone, second highlight is Screaming Skull. You can just add white to more gas bone as well and do the same thing. Uh, and there you can see I, you know, I picked out a couple of the teeth. Uh, when you're painting in the uh, Screaming Skull highlights, don't just cover over all of the more gas bone highlights that you've painted. You just want to pick out some of the details, a few of the raised edges and things like that. And you know that it helps the, the depth and the contrast uh, and it saves you time. There's just no no reason. Like if you you wanted to paint them just a bright white screaming skull, you could have done that to start with. Just keep doing multiple layers of you know thin layers of that, and it, you would get a, a nice bright finish. But I wanted some of sort of like textured kind of bony textures. I mean, a lot of this model is textured. I think it makes it look a bit more interesting. 
So we're making good progress now, coming up to the final sort of pieces here. I'm going to show you how to do the skin. Uh, it's pretty simple. Right, remember the skin, first of all, was painted with Bane Blade Brown. Then it was given the oil wash that dulled it down. Now I'm going in with uh, clean flesh tone. Uh, you want it fairly watered down again, around about 50-50 water to paint. And you can see I'm just using the tip of the brush. Don't put too much paint on the brush here, just tiny amounts. And you can see with it watered down how it just sort of like, there's a certain run to the paint. And so I look where I want the highlight to be, take the tip of the brush, push the paint towards the highlight point, and then you take the brush off. It leaves a slightly larger deposit of paint wherever you remove the brush. Uh, so, you know, just doing these very gentle, tiny little marks towards the brightest part that you want them to be, uh, you get a, a transition, pretty much. It's not an even coverage of paint all the way along the mark. Wherever you, like I said, wherever you take the paintbrush off, that leaves a stronger element of paint behind it. And again, I'm using a size 00 Artis Opus brush. Uh, but, you know, any sort of uh, brush will do as long as it's got a good tip on it. And that, you know, it really is important for that kind of um, sort of sharp, detailed painting, especially on these smaller areas. Like if you're painting like, uh, say, a, like a 70 or 90 millimeter model or whatever, then having such a sharp tip for something like this wouldn't be that big of an issue because <laughs> this head would be a you know a lot bigger but on, on a small model like this uh, having that sharp tip uh, really does help with the, the control uh, so the second stage highlight I'm using Kislev flesh but it doesn't matter it's almost the same color as Morgas bone I've got a few like you can see there I've got the bone colors to the left so the top left is Morgas bone and below that is screaming skull uh, top right is Cadian Flesh Tone, and in the middle between uh, the Morgas Bone and Cadian Flesh Tone, that's Kislev Flesh. And you can see, like, there's just bits of pink and stuff, difference between them. Uh, if you just put Cadian Flesh Tone and then highlighted it with Morgas Bone, uh, you, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But the main thing is just look at how I'm applying the highlights, it's just very small areas always pushing to the paint towards the highlight point that's the big thing because it creates a transition and because I'm only you know painting in small little areas uh, it's quite quick and easy to do and then on the tongue there just going back a bit with the uh, Bane Blade Brown just to make him look a bit ill still you know so he's kind of desaturated uh, there's no blood left in him or anything like that he's just looking very dead and poorly Few little dots of highlight it's a really nice highlight that actually the one on the top of the head uh, draws the eye nicely it's got a high contrast because of the uh, the temple next to it being dark uh, you know stands out really really well so uh, final stage is just to highlight the metallics so I've gone back to the uh, with burnt iron, the Vallejo metal color burnt iron. And all I'm doing is just picking out the areas that are catching the light the most. So, okay, like hold it under your lamp. Uh, what you'll find is that the left hand side of those spikes will catch the light. So just paint those all metallic. Remember, you've had a matte varnish on here. So it's dulled down a lot of the metallics, but they're still sort of, they still have the kind of mica or whatever in them to make them look shiny. So they'll still look metallic, uh, just not as bright as they were. So the nice thing is when you're applying this, it just works as a highlight. Uh, the best thing is on the weapon here, uh, this is where the, the most amount of work will pay off. Now the weapon looks really nice and grimy. So all you're having to do is just pick out basically the edges, any upwards facing edges, or if there's a curve, there's a few slight curves, it's like the engine exhaust part and um, you know, whatever they are, the, the engine cover, uh, 
just pick these out you can put a few scratches in as well so it looks like you know there's fresh metal showing through on the grime but just picking out uh, the edge highlights and things uh, just gives it a little bit of detail and depth so it's not a lot of work but it creates a nice uh, high contrast finish and because the uh, the burnt iron it's not a super bright silver finish like if you went in with a chrome or whatever it would almost look obnoxious with how bright it is because but because it's a little bit duller but it's just bright enough to work as a highlight uh, it's you know kind of I feel like it's a much more effective uh, to, um, kind of highlight for it and here just a little bit of uh, burnt iron on top of the curve as well but again it's like kind of like the white less is more uh, will get the job done and so it, you don't even need a nice transition like you just kind of like do either stippling or scratchy kind of marks with this uh, and, and like the grime does a lot of the work so you can see I've just been over the whole model with the metallics and things just picked out bits here and there uh, and that's pretty much the model painted so you can see I've got sand on the base now I haven't painted the base at all this is just regular sand uh, I glued it to the base using PVA and then I mix more PVA, watered down, ran that all over the sand. That's a really good tip. It makes the sand not rub off. Like usually when people put sand on a base, they just put the glue down, put dust the sand on top, leave it to dry. Then they'll paint it and dry brush it. And what you find is bits of sand flakes off. But it, if you put the glue down, put the sand down, then watered down PVA, flood the base on top of that uh, and leave that to dry the sand will be kind of like rock solid it won't rub off uh you know as you do more to it but i'm being really lazy here so i'm not painting the base at all i'm just going for forge world weathering powder dark sand uh using quite a large brush uh, i think this might be a size two uh, windsor and newton but it was one that was a bit you know rubbish when i got it so i just um, put it to one side uh, but it's kind of like a nice big brush so I can very delicately dust the uh, put the powder onto the base now if you want to fix it just give it another matte varnish that will stop the uh, the powder from going away but like unless you're going to get water on there to reactivate it or whatever I wouldn't worry too much about about that really um, and, and that's pretty much it that's the end of the video uh, so I hope you enjoyed it uh, please subscribe. I've got lots more videos coming. There's going to be quite a bit more Horse Heresy stuff uh, with the launch of the new game. Uh, but I've, there's plenty uh, of other things uh, to come as well. Uh, I also have my Patreon and my personal website with uh, hundreds of tutorials on. Um, and there will also be a PDF for this on those as well. Uh, so, you know, patrons uh, get the PDF, whereas this is uh, something that you'll be able to watch on YouTube. So uh, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.